In this video we're going to do a screen comparison of the Lumia 920, 925 and 820. Now the left hand two devices here have an AMOLED screen, the 920 of course has an LCD IPS based screen. You can see the AMOLED devices arguably have slightly brighter or more vibrant colours. The 820 actually illustrates one of the problems, almost oversaturated. The colour accuracy is definitely better on the 920, but the 925 strikes a happy medium between the two. Notice for example on the AMOLED screens how these dark colours, kind of the pure blacks, are actually more accurate. You do get used to one or the other, but of the three screens here, in terms of kind of clarity, brightness and colour reproduction, the 925 is the best. It's no surprise actually that the 820 has an advantage over the 920, quite apart from being high resolution, it's also brighter, up to 600 nits, that's the highest available on an OLED screen on the kind of current smartphone market. In terms of actual the physical screen size, well these two are 4.5 inches, the 820 is 4.3 inches, as I mentioned it's lower resolution, 480 by 800 versus the kind of 720p plus of this high resolution, that's 1280 pixels times 768. Uh, AMOLED does actually have a few other advantages. In the rest of this video we're mainly going to be talking about the 920 and the 925, so I just wanted to take the 820 out here. Now AMOLED screen, what does that mean? Well there's no air gap on this device in the screen makeup, and screens are made up of several layers, kind of glass, the actual screen, various touch layers and other bits and pieces. You don't really need to worry about them, but what having no air gap means is the device can be thinner, and it's actually one of the reasons there are other contributing factors why the 920 is considerably thicker than the 925. It's 10.7 millimeters versus 8.5 millimeters, but also arguably just as importantly, it also reduces number of reflections. You can probably see that if I pull the light over that and then over that like that, the 920 is slightly inferior. Now both these are very good. Nokia has what it calls sunlight readability enhancements in both of these devices and consequently outdoor and bright sunlight both of these screens are remarkably visible. The 925 though just having an advantage because of that lack of air gap due to the AMOLED technology. The other thing that makes a difference on, between these two devices is the viewing angle and it's partly down to the technology and partly down to the improved screen. You can see if I tip these two devices up you can see that the viewing angle on the 925 is considerably better. This will work up to, you know, 45, 50 degrees. The 925, by comparison, will actually get almost all the way to 90 degrees remaining visible. So that's an advantage if you're looking at when it's sitting on the desk, you're looking at an angle or something like that. So again, the 925 has a, a superior screen to the 920. It's also got improved super sensitive touch. It's quite hard to illustrate this one, but this is the technology whereby you can use the back of your fingernail. You can probably see there, the 925 was just a little bit more responsive. Also worked with other things. So if I bring in this piece of paper, for example, you can use the screen through that and it works on both devices just fine. But as I say, the 925 is that kind of next generation of the technology, so just a little bit more sensitive. There's one other thing we should probably talk about and that's in the software. We'll have to go into settings to have a look at this. We go on both devices and we go down to Nokia's specific uh, display plus touch module. We'll do that on the 925 there and I'll do it on the 920. What you'll see is on the first page of the screen there's actually an extra feature here on the 925 and that's the Lumia Color Profile. This allows you to change the kind of the color saturation, the color temperature of the screen. And there's example photos up here so you can see the effects. If I just do that you can see there's some changes to the actual display of the screen. Now the good news is actually the 920 will also be getting this technology in, as part of a software update, so it's not really unique to the 925, so there's really no difference here. One thing that is important though is that the 925 also has this glance uh, technology. This is that when you turn the device off or put it into lock screen mode, you'll actually get an always on clock. Again, this is gonna be available on the 920, but it only really works with an AMOLED screen. That's because an AMOLED screen can light up individual pixels, Whereas a 920 with its LCD screen will have to light up the whole backlight. It's basically more power efficient here on the 920. You will get one more extra software feature on both these devices in due course, and that's a double tap to wake up. You can see I hit the screen twice there, unlock the device. So there we go. There's a quick look at a screen comparison between these two devices. Both have excellent screens. Um, I've always liked the 920 in that department, but I'm kind of pleasantly surprised that Nokia's made it a number of changes that actually make the 925 notably better. And given that you spend more time staring at your screen than anything else, it's well worthwhile and one of the notable hardware upgrades on the 925 when compared to the Lumia 920 here. 